Welcome to News Alert on Capital Television. Greater Accra Regional Minister Joseph Nilaye Afote Agbo is assuring everyone in the Greater Accra Region of adequate security when the ban on drumming and noise making is imposed from the 12th of May. Nilaye Afote Agbo told Capital News that all what is important is for everyone to appreciate the need for peaceful coexistence in order to avoid any altercations. As a regional minister, I want to assure everybody that there would be that needed or necessary protection. There is going to be vigilance on the ground. We will be there to protect each and everybody, whoever you are, wherever you come from. And no matter what your political affiliation, you'll be given, given the needed recognition and respect. Meanwhile, the Regional Security Council has met in preparation for the announcement on the ban on drumming and noise making. The meeting chaired by the Regional Minister was to deliberate on security arrangements as the ban comes into force on Monday 12th of May. The committee decided to recommend that the ban on drumming and noise making in the Gatwaza area should be observed under the following guidelines in the interest of peace, harmony, and national security. One, that during the period of the ban, the usual form of worship should be confined to, to church premises and noise levels minimized to the prescribed decibels. Two, the Christian community and the traditional authorities must show respect for one another and restrain their followers from making derogatory statements about the beliefs and practices of one another's religion. Three, the positioning of loudspeakers outside the premises of churches and mosques in, in band, uh, is banned and roadside evangelism are to cease their activities during this period. Four, apart from the task force which consists of AMA personnel, the police service, and representative from the traditional authorities or the traditional council, no other person or group of persons should be seen or found enforcing the abatement of noise in the metropoli metropolis. Five, a task force has been constituted to work in collaboration with the police service and representatives from, the, from both OSU and Gatwater councils to monitor and enforce the abatement of, cons of excessive noise in the metropolis during the period of the ban. Today is Mother's Day and Capital TV put up a special Mother's Day program with some Ghanaian celebrities as hosts. One of the hosts was Braima Kamoko, known as Bukum Banku. After his session, Capital TV News spoke with him.
It is the wish of every worker that one day he or she will live in a house they will call their own. But increasingly in Ghana, this might just remain a pipe dream forever for many workers, especially civil servants and public sector workers. The reason is simple. A survey results indicate that a whopping 85% of Ghanaians cannot afford to own a house simply because the economic fundamentals of the country are impacting negatively on their standard of living. For instance, a two-bedroom semi-detached we sold at $69,000 in quarter one of 2013 now sells at $98,000 in quarter one of 2014 an increase of 23.5%. Compounding the situation is the 17.5% VAT that real estate companies are expected to pay. Obviously, this cost will be transferred to buyers, worsening the already precarious situation in the housing industry. The report notes that the current pricing situation favors young corporate executives, middle-level and high-income level earners who are mostly found in the banking, telecoms and insurance sectors of the country. These people are able to afford houses ranging between $70,000 and $150,000 U.S. dollars. The breakdown means that only persons with a minimum wage of 4,000 Ghana cities will be able to afford even a mortgage facility in Ghana. One of the slangs or cliches often used in Ghana when it comes to housing is the word affordable. Even the government continues to talk about affordable housing projects or units for the ordinary Ghanaian. But in all these talks, government has failed to categorize what it means by affordable. It is worth noting that countries such as Senegal, Kenya and Uganda have moved further with this talk of affordability by defining their social housing schemes. Senegal defines its social housing as that which costs less than 40,000 US dollars with the affordable home price ranging between 13,000 and 22,000 US dollars. But in Ghana, such a categorization is yet to be known or defined. Juxtaposing the happenings within the housing industry against salary levels and the current economic situation, one can clearly say that it is nearly impossible for public sector wage earners to afford a house in Ghana. Then, what does affordable mean to Ghana?